it's, yeah, good, good point, it's got a kick in it, so what we do is on that little slice that's got the kick on, just delete it. It's right, so kind of simple as, and you, and you can keep messing around with these until you've got some really good loops. It might be that you want to remake those loops afterwards, but to get ideas, it's, it's fantastic just to, just to stick things in really quickly. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Thor synth that Andy was showing a minute ago. Uh, someone or producer we're really looking up to over the last sort of year or so is Dead Mouse. Uh, he's definitely the man of the moment. Uh, and he's actually a really looking... decent guy as well. I mean, he came into um, to Galaxy on um, came in to do a little chat and interview on my on my show, and he was he was really sound. He spent a bit of time chatting with us, and we, we exchanged a few sort of nerdy, geeky producer uh, um, ideas and stuff. But uh, we we were looking, like Nick said, with the thought about how we could create some of some of his sounds because he really did come in with with a whole new style going back 12, 18 months, and it you know. All respect to the guy, he's incredibly good at what he does, makes us amazing stuff, but we did manage to recreate it quite quickly, and we can show you how to do that as well. Right, so if we start from pretty much just a, uh, a blank rack, I've just got a kick in here for a bit of side chain for later on. Uh, start off with the Thor synth, so let me create one of those. We've actually saved a, um, uh, a little preset, and we've called it Dead Mouse. And I would just say at this point as well, I would never recommend to anyone that they try and make a, a poor man's Dead Mouse record, or a poor man's Tiesto or a poor man's Hervé, you know, anyone who you kind of look up to, take their ideas, like, you know, like we have here, and, and, and mess around with them, but, you know, we get so many tracks that you just think, well, you've just tried to copy someone else, which is, is never kind of good, so. Just use them for reference and inspiration. Yeah. But I'm just going to show you how simple it is to recreate someone's sound, even, you know, within a, quite a basic like package like reason. So I've got the Thor synth here. We've saved this um, this um, preset as Dead Mouse. It's one that we've created. It's just um, so all we need to do now is put a uh, pegiator on it. Create that. Stick that on hold and take it down to eight, and then leave that go. now is a little bit of side chain so create a compressor flip it round and you've suddenly got a nice little groove, so... someone else's sound. Um, like I say, I, I would I'd recommend you, you play with other people's music, but like, don't try and rip them off because you just you will end up with a, a crappy poor man's version of it. Right, the next thing we're going to show you is it's basically a new project that we're working on, um, the three of us, um, Ryan Duran and Mark Maitland. Uh, it's a new band. We're not well. We have got a few names for it, and they're all a bit stupid because Mark comes up with <laughs> ridiculous. Dogs on skateboards is the crappy name. name of the, the Don't people will steal it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Don't people will steal the dogs um, on skateboards? So, so with this, uh, we, we basically just started off with the vocal, don't we? And we, we've got us. We're working with a songwriter. Um, we've got someone else to actually write the. The, this kind of words to this one, but so it just it just came through as a male a cappella, mm -hmm. uh, and when we first heard it, it sounded the the, the vocal sort of lends itself to sort of quite a rocky track. Yeah, uh, and then we thought about making a, a, a bootleg track out of it. So we started off in Reason uh, with layering up the vocal with some different rock guitars, some different uh, sort of more acoustic band esque percussion, uh, and then transferred it over to Mark's computer, which was using uh, Logic. 
uh, to actually build the whole track around it. Yeah. So the way the way the track's formulated is a thing that uh, me and Andy did. Make, basically make a boot, we make, we're trying to make it sound like yeah. a bootleg, but actually it's a total original track, but we just wanted to make it sound like we'd sampled off a, a, a kind of indie record. So or breakdown of an indie record. This is the, the vocal that we got at the start. This night is unfolding and I just can't hold in the words that I want to say. That's one of the verses and it's just totally dry. Um, so the first thing we did is me and Nick locked ourselves away for a day and um, got some guitar parts around it as well. Now this is kind of done in a very weird, weird way. I mean, it would have been actually a lot easier just to pick up a guitar and put some chords in, but we're working with um, loops on this. I think we've just got a new loop pack. And in fact, it's called Raw Power, the one that we used. Um, and each of these is basically a, a different, um, different key of guitar. So say so this one, and that one is I'll turn these up so you can hear them. And then this one. But if you lay them all up and put them in the right place, they start to sound like this. So you can see that's actually four different Rex loops, all just playing one solid guitar strum but when you chop them up and you put four of them in a row it suddenly becomes a proper guitar loop but because we need them to all sound exactly the same uh, we do something with a combinator on reason so all you do is say you've got um, four guitar parts if I've got four Rex loops I'll just do them here one two three although in fact there's just a random redrum I could just highlight all of these and then combine and it'll just stick them all into this combinator. Now all of those now uh, are coming from the same, that, that's now basically one audio unit so I can put any sort of effects or you know delays, reverbs, um, distortion on that and it just combines everything in one so we've basically got four different guitar parts playing four different loops but they can all be put through one channel and made into something that's kind of one solid block so that's what we do with this. We uh, experimented with some drums, some more rock based drums, so here we've got just another loop from the loop player. And these guitars are actually MIDI parts, um, we, we, I think we originally did this on a guitar, but thought it was easier just to use a synthesized guitar within Reason. One of, the, one of the reasons that we did this part in Reason before we moved on to Logic is because uh, actually Reason has a lot, well, I mean you can probably, you, you're, you're the logic expert, but it actually is a lot easier to make orchestral it's a, it's real a lot, It's definitely a lot easier to use like uh, drum samples and pre-made pre things and rex loops than it is in logic just to move things around. You can obviously do what Andy showed you before with all the points and stuff. It's just a lot, lot easier and a lot quicker to try and recreate what we've done here with uh, a rock rock element of sound, whereas logic will pretty much lend itself to it, unless it's uh, recorded live, mm -hmm. to more of a dance element. Uh, and I think it's also probably because, like with the um, the factory sound bank within Reason, actually comes preloaded with loads mm. of really good, um, you know, electric and acoustic guitars, a lot of orchestral things, so strings, flutes. The depth, the depth of Reason's yeah. bags are really, really good. So these guitar parts here um, are literally just a little MIDI loop that we're recording. <laughs> Just, you know, it's, it's, a really, it's, it's actually a combinator patch, this. Um, I'm not sure if it's one that's come with Reason. Let me have a look. Yeah, it is. So this is straight out of the Reason factory sound bank. It's uh, in combinator patches, guitar unplugged, electric guitar, uh, Edge, live from Boston. And it... All we've added to that is a bit of delay. That's, that's the only thing that we've stuck on top of it. Oh, and some screen by looks things as well. Just a little bit of distortion on the uh, tube, not too much, just enough to get a bit, a bit of grip. Once that pattern's in, there's some pads that just come in here. 